Afternoon, ladies and gents. Uh, Simon Brown here doing introduction for Warren Peacock. So uh, last month, Warren did a, a presentation on on, on uh, trading markets, trading versus trending markets. And this month and then next, we're going to do a trading. And the next month, the trending, as I said today, uh, trading. Your questions, drop them in the Q&A box. But Warren, over to you. Oh, thank you, Simon. Welcome, everyone. Uh, today, we're just going to be having a look at one system to trade on markets that are range bound. Uh, they won't be in tight ranges, they will have swings. Uh, you can't really trade something that's you know, got a 2% range. So if you look at the Aussie earlier this year, it was in a really tight range, it becomes difficult to trade a daily chart like that and you don't make any money. So you have to start looking at uh, intraday charts. Uh, today I've I'm going to have a look at, a, at uh, trading the ranges on shares and I've got a gold chart in there to show a triangle formation. All right, so what is range trading? Basically, it's the art of catching quick trades in the absence of strong underlying trends. So when we look at a trend, obviously, it's easy to see which direction we should be in. We should either be long all the time or short all the time until it changes. When it comes to trading the range, uh, you can trade both ways, and they can be pretty quick. So this week, you might be long. Next week, you might be short. There is a caveat to this, of course. It takes a lot of practice. Uh, you have to study and you have to be really patient to become competent. A lot of people think that range trading is a simple easy process, you know, I can just look at a trend line and buy the bounce off a trend line and I'm going to make money. It doesn't always work that easily. It does require a lot of technical analysis knowledge. Uh, you have to take everything that you know about TA, put it together and have many different ways to trigger an entry. Uh, today I'm going to share uh, one particular trigger. Uh, let's have a look quickly. Support and resistance. Any line that joins two swing points and is extended into the future. Doesn't matter if it's angular or horizontal. Any line that can join two swing points and you extend it into the future, that becomes future support and resistance if it is uh, hit again by price. You can draw those trend lines on wicks or bodies but just be consistent on that particular chart. So if you decide that you're going to draw this chart, you're going to use the wicks because it looks better, then make sure that you use the wicks all the time on that particular chart. If you're going to use the bodies, then you make sure that you use the, the bodies all the time. Uh, as you get better at it, you can use both. So you can use the wicks and the bodies and you can get yourself a support or resistance zone as opposed to just a fixed price. Sometimes those Trend lines and the horizontal lines make chart patterns. All chart patterns are consolidations. So if you see a head and shoulders, it's a consolidation. If you see a triangle, it's consolidation. And that is what we are going to be trading in. Tradable patterns, the range, you know, that you've got a two horizontal lines, those can be tradable. Wedges that are of decent size can be tradable. And of course, triangles. But again, only if they're big enough to actually make some money out of them. Okay, so we do need some distance. When you start getting small time frames, <clears throat> excuse me, and you want to trade a triangle, uh, you can end up buying it in the middle of the triangle instead of sort of at the lower end, and you end up not making any money by the time it hits resistance. All right, so you do have to measure the, the distance and the potential profit for each trade. I decided to start with the trigger this time. And it's just one of many, okay. A run of red candles, preferably five or more, would be nice, but it's not essential. Okay, so we would like to see five down candles before we get the, the last two candle lows. And we can see in the picture here, that low is lower than the previous low, and then we get a rising low. So that is trigger number one. The entry is generally on the next candle. So if the next candle opens up, confirms the, the direction, we're going to be looking at it. So that would be for your long setup. Now, remember, it's just a few candles. Okay, we're going to tie this together with support and resistance. On the short side, it's the same idea. We have a nice run of green candles. This high is higher than that high. That high is lower than the previous high. That would be considered a negative 
uh, for the market. In other words, the sellers are now in control on the red candle. Open of the next candle would be the entry. It's a really simple way to look at the market. And obviously, the stop losses would be just above resistance or below support. I'm just going to have a look at some analysis. Uh, I chose Billiton here. It had a really nice rising wedge that lasted for mm, just short of a year. And I numbered the, the trend line points. So we first we drew the trend line from there to there, point 0.1 to point 0.2. And the same on the bottom, you draw it from point 0.1 to point 0.2. And the price, sorry, the trend line then gets extended into the future. As the price starts approaching the upper trend line, we start to get interested. It is a rising wedge, which is considered negative. Okay, so we would be looking for shorts. The uh, false break. Obviously, it's only confirmed once the price returned into the, the wedge formation. False breaks are good indication of reversals. All right, so it's something to take notice of. Uh, the same on the on the low end here. We have price breaking the wedge, and then the candles have gone and closed back inside the wedge, giving us a long. The this red line is the stochastic trigger. Price is broken above the wedge, pulled back into the wedge, stochastic fires are short. On the right hand side, that red line is for stochastic divergence, giving us a long signal. That red line there gives us the crossover of the stochastic. And we have the falling candles with higher lows over there. And at the top, we've got the rising candles with the falling lows. All right, so the first the first thing to do was draw the trend lines in. We can see it's a narrow narrowing pattern. If the market confirms that it's consolidating, even though it's upward sloping, still consolidating. It false breaks, pulls back in. I'm now interested because it is confirming the, uh, the idea of consolidation. I have zoomed in so we can see a little bit better uh, what's going on there. So the first orange circle, we can see. Rising candles, rising highs. That candle there gives me a lower high. That lower high is the trigger confirmed by the filter of the stochastic, giving me a signal. Uh, it can even just be that it is in overbought territory. Uh, I don't really trade this on indices. Um, you can use the idea on intraday stuff, but obviously I've got different systems for different reasons. The idea of a stochastic is just very dangerous in general. That's why I tied together with this chart pattern, the, the trend lines, the false breakup, the lower high, the stochastic is overbought, crosses below 80, confirms the trigger of the rising of the sorry of the of the falling high generated over there. Entry on the next candle. If you wanted more confirmation, you could have waited for the next day to to really start moving. Uh, this is aggressive trading. You don't want to take your time. You don't want to think about it too much. If you see the trigger, make the trade. You can measure your stop loss top of the pattern. And you can measure, you know, best case scenario, you would take the distance of the wedge and just use 61.8%. Uh, percent. And that would be how you would measure your risk reward ratio just to see whether the trade is worthwhile or not. Price comes off, starts to bounce up, doesn't really break a swing high, and you can hold your trade. It breaks below the wedge, pulls back above the wedge, you can exit on a trailing stop. The other way to look at this is you could have just taken a percentage target. Uh, you could have just said, you know, if it gets to three, three and a half percent, I'm going to close my trade. I've covered costs, I've made good money. Uh, but obviously, you just make sure that you have enough shares and the trade is, is actually worth the effort. On the long side, by the time the market is dropping through the wedge, we can see the stochastic would have just been oversold. In other words, it hadn't really formed divergence yet. It would have just been a dot down at the bottom here. But it is certainly a warning. You could have exited your trade on any one of those two candles or even the first green candle over there, especially when you see the setup, lower lows all the way through. Rising low, the stochastic now starts to turn up, giving me the hint of divergence. 
Uh, remember, the divergence would have been confirmed when the stochastic crossed uh, one of those two candles. But that rising low will give me the early entry trade. Crosses back into the wedge. If you had waited, uh, if you'd waited the extra day, then you would have been in on that that red candle. Uh, whether you got near the entry, or you'd have to work out your your actual entry criteria. Market moves up, and again, I would just take 61.8 percent of the wedge. 61.8 percent. That would be target one. Is the trade worth it when compared to the stop loss? If I use the bottom, I'm looking at almost a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. Uh, you'd have to decide whether that's good enough for you or not. Um, otherwise, you could have moved your stop loss accordingly. I don't like doing that in general, but you could have just moved it to a close below the, the wedge uh, or that lower trend line. If you do that, you've got to understand the price could have, have closed anywhere. So it could have closed much lower than expected. Uh, the point was the trade was there, the signals were there. If you're unhappy about the big stop loss, you could take a smaller position, making sure that 61.8% of the distance from bottom to top of the wedge is enough to make it a reasonable profit. And we can see what happened. The price eventually broke the top of the wedge. The stochastic is overbought again. Take your profit, walk away. And Burton continued in this, in this vein for quite some time. Uh, broke the top, broke the bottom, broke the top, broke the bottom. And, and as the wedge gets narrower, there's no money in it. You don't want to trade just for the sake of trading. You want to trade to make money. So look for enough width and make sure that it's going to give you a decent profit on at least 62% of the, the range of the chart pattern. Uh, if you have questions, please write them down and, and we'll have a, have a look at them at the end of the webinar. OK, then gold. I think uh, most South Africans are, have, have an interest in gold in one form or another. Uh, gold has been building this triangle for, and again we can see 0.1, 0.2. On the lower side, we actually end up with a horizontal trend line, 0.1 and 0.2. The top line is sloping downwards. We have a triangle formation. The weekly chart gave bearish engulfing over there, certainly pointing to further downside. All right. Now, when we look at a big pattern like this. And you can see a triangle of this size. We know that there's money to be made on smaller time frames. All right, especially gold, it's highly leveraged, etc. You can make the trades and you can make a reasonable profit. So we started at the weekly chart. We see the triangle draw lines in. And we then go and have a look at a daily chart. So I've zoomed in so that we can see the start of the triangle over there. The price came down. The price went up from 0.2. Another bearish engulfing on the daily chart. At that point, an aggressive trader would be shorting it. And not necessarily targeting the ultimate lows, but certainly would be looking to short that for a, for a decent profit from uh, it's about 1340 to 1280. And when you add some leverage to that, it's, it's quite a reasonable trade. A lot of traders would be sitting here looking at gold saying, oh, I'll wait for the break, I'll wait for the break. Okay, now. Waiting for the break has its merits, absolutely. Uh, a lot of the times I'm looking for the break rather than trading the, the, the trying to get some money out of the, the middle of the consolidation. But there is money to be made there if you are an aggressive trader. Okay, so if you if you into this quick decision making, quick in, quick out, although if you have a look, it's not so quick, there's a good couple of days in that move down. Okay. The idea here is that I might not trade that second point. So we might not trade from there, but certainly once the price doesn't find a low, you know, it doesn't go back to support, all it does is it comes back, it breaks above interim resistance. Okay, so that's point one. So now we're starting to think bullish. We then end up with a stochastic giving us divergence. Okay, the price does not hit the upper trend line. Now, of course, gold is, is one of those things that's very much under pressure at the moment. Uh, ideally, your bias is to the downside. Uh, triangle patterns being consolidations, consolidations normally being uh, mid-trend. Okay, so if gold has come down, formed a triangle, we expect it to break to the bottom, to the, to the lower end. 
Stochastic gives us divergence. At the top, there is an evening star candle pattern on the gold. All right, we've had a few candles making higher highs, then made a lower high. Failure to reach a historical res oops, sorry about that. A historical resistance is a really good sign of weakness. Okay, so we get a bearish pattern close to the trend line, but the market is not pushing towards the previous important high. <clears throat> it broke the initial resistance and then went a little bit sideways, already showing us that sellers are in the market. Now, yeah, it pushed up, gave us stochastic divergence, didn't hit the trend line, didn't get anywhere near the previous high, really bearish sign, we're going to look to trade it. All right, so you look at the trade and you say, again, if I take the distance 61 point, oops, sorry, 61.8 over there and work out how much profit that would be plus the leverage, it's a decent trade. Uh, this example, you could have in hindsight taken it all the way to the, to the bottom of the trade line and I would have been quite happy to do that if I had more than one contract. So if you have three or four contracts, you can trade your stops out as each target uh, level is hit. All right, so the idea is, <clears throat> excuse me, it failed to make the new high, gave me a bearish candle pattern, followed the, uh, the, the swing turning point, so we had those rising highs, then a lower high, plus we had the bearish uh, evening star, market comes off into the trade, stop loss, uh, you can measure your stop loss, you could have put it at the candle pattern, or you could have put it above the, the trade line, I think the candle pattern would have been better in this case, uh, especially, you know, you could maybe take off two-thirds of your trade and leave the balance to stop out above the trend line. Eventually, it went to target, you close your trade, and you go long, eh? Um, <clears throat> you could have done exactly that. You could have just entered on the morning star at the bottom over there, and you're holding the long trade now with the trailing stop. The stochastic was oversold. There was some divergence at the bottom, crossed the trigger line, and you could have been long on gold now for the top of the consolidation. But, of course, you can draw trend lines in. It, it's not a... There are no rules for this type of trading. That's why, in the beginning, I said it requires quite a lot of work. Uh, you have to you have to study a lot of ways of trading. You have to look at trend lines. You have to look at candle patterns, chart patterns, interim trend, uh, change in direction. You could even start looking at uh, something like a tricks momentum. All right, so you can add some other indicators in to to really get momentum understood. There are many ways to do it. The simplest way is to look for those. Uh, falling lows, first highest low on support plus a stochastic, and we're in the trade. All right, the settings for the stochastic do change. <clears throat> I don't keep them for this kind of trading. I don't keep them the same. I look at the chart and determine what the swings are like. So for narrow patterns like or narrow win patterns like wedges, uh, and maybe narrower ranges. You know, gold is a big range plus leverage. But if you take a stock. If it has a, a narrow range, but it has, let's say, 8% in it, okay, then I'd use a 10 3, 3 slow stochastic. I want the stochastic to be a bit quicker, but I'll only trade it at or near the trend lines. You don't want to be trading just because a stochastic says it's a sell or a buy. We actually want the price to be following some guidelines. Okay, so support and resistance, 10 3, 3 slow stochastic on narrow patterns, plus the rising highs, lower high, off the trend line, plus an overbought stochastic. That would be the trigger. For the large patterns like the, the range we looked at on gold, <clears throat> and the large ranges, sorry, and triangles like we looked at on gold, I tend to use the 2133. All right, it gives me a lot more time. It's a little bit slower. I don't get too many false trades. We don't want to be trading middle of the range. If that price is mid-range, I'm not interested. Want it to be upper end of the range for shorts or lower end of the range for longs. Big patterns, slower stochastic. All right, it also depends how large that consolidation is and how big the swings are. Uh, when we start looking, I was going to move to the next slide. When we start looking at length and distance, these trades are short in time and price. I'm not looking for a 25% run on the underlying stock. We're not looking for a 20% you know, run on gold. We're really looking for small, good, quick moves. 
The other side is the, the trade doesn't always reach the opposite end of the consolidation. So sometimes we, we have to take take a profit before it gets to its target point. It pulls back whatever gives us a we're short, it gives us a bullish um, trigger. Take a profit. Remember, they're short in time and price, and they don't always reach the targets. The interim support and resistance points. So we've got a swing. Let's say it has a move, a pullback, a move. That gives me three steps. So let's just say we are we're going long. Market moves up, it pulls back a little bit and moves up again. We got a step of three. The low of that second move down is interim support. Okay. So you can, if the swing is big enough, you can look at that interim support level as initial targets to determine the trade. Sometimes that interim support is where the market actually comes in, finds new support, and then shoots the lights out, breaks the top of the range, and off we go on the breakout trade. Okay, if initial targets are less than 3%, you can wait for other opportunities. Uh, you really, really don't want to be you know, scalping around there for 1.5%, 2% moves. Okay, we need at least 3%, allow for some slippage, allow for costs. The history of the chart is also important. When we look at charts like Capitec and Lewis, the swings are awesome. Uh, they're really big, 10% swings, sometimes more. Gee, but trying to get the entries, very difficult. I've looked at Capitec and I looked at Capitec and every time it, it came down to, to some sort of level, uh, uh, we can actually have a look at the chart there. Uh, there's Capitec from 2012 and I only took it to, to this point. Obviously Capitec has now broken the range uh, and it's made a run much higher. Uh, maybe the market's betting on Capitec picking up some of the able business. Uh, one of the problems with these stocks is all the orange lines are resistance levels at the top and then we can see support at the bottom. Now, uh, Capitec hasn't followed any rules. Okay, so we have a support level there and it just keeps breaking it. There's no divergence on the stochastic. Uh, Capitec just keeps breaking the lines, breaking the lines, spike lows. Uh, and when we get breaks like this, they false breaks are not even working because the market moves up and then it moves down again and then it shoots the lights out. And it goes through every resistance level without stopping, so there's no shorting it. Very, very difficult to trade. Okay, so we don't get carried away the fact that we've got awesome moves, I just look at the chart and you can figure out that there's just no entries. Even the even the uh, the lower lows with the higher low as a trigger, not working. Because uh, you just get this massive candle the next day, and whatever stop loss you put in there is not going to be it's not going to be big enough. All right, and the same thing with Lewis. Uh, Lewis is actually uh, it built some nice support, but again it was spiking below it then it comes down and finds support on it. The lower lows with the higher low didn't work. In other words, the triggers aren't even working. If the triggers aren't working, the system is not going to work. The trigger requires the system to be working before you can apply the trigger. And we can see, Lewis, great moves, just virtually impossible to trade on this, on this basis. Uh, obviously, some people are trying it. Uh, the sellers came in here, whether they were selling or shorting, I can't really tell, but certainly the sellers were in charge. And then the buyers buy these two massive green candles. Market pulls it back again, and then we get gaps and candles, big candles and gaps and big candles. All right, so we stay, I stay away from charts that look like that. Uh, with Capitec, if you were a longer-term investor, sure, then you can look at buying it on these lows. Uh, obviously, that was the able news and everything. It was all negative. Capitec hadn't changed its business. So as an investor, you're certainly interested there. But as a leverage trader, there's you know you're taking you're taking a heck of a risk um, because you'd have to use something like two and a half times ATR, or maybe even three times ATR, to get a decent stop loss out the way. All right, so trading a, a choppy chart is is not great. So there's very little consistency with these shares when it comes to support and resistance. There are no discernible patterns. Uh, we can see because none of the levels tie up. And even when you start drawing angular trend lines, it looks like there's a pattern until you try and trade it. Okay, so it's better to wait on these stocks for an absolute turn on Lewis. I'd probably recommend something like a weekly chart or maybe a, even a monthly chart. Wait for the break. Capitec has broken. Okay, so chart looks like that. Leave it alone. Wait for the breakout. The market then likes the stock again. 
uh, important to note, trading within consolidations is generally higher risk. There's no space for indecision on the entries or the exits. When you've got the profit, take it. We don't want to be hanging around the 5% profit today and then you have a 1.5% profit tomorrow. Uh, when stocks are in these ranges, they tend to increase in volatility. Candles can get really big. Uh, so this is something that you, you might even consider trading with, with two targets. So at 50% of the target, you take half your trade off. At the full target, you take the balance off with the trailing stop for the balance. Aggressive traders tr tend to, to trade these kinds, these kinds of systems. Okay, so if you are someone who can make a decision quickly, you're aggressively in, aggressively out, this is the kind of thing you'd be looking for generally. And it's just simply aggressive traders very seldom have the patience to watch a trend work. If you prefer to trade less aggressively, uh, the next webinar is going to be in November and we're going to look at swing trading but within the trend. Uh, there's already on Just One Lap uh, and my website there's already a webinar on the, the CFD system which is basically trading direction of the trend. But next time we're going to put a, a different spin on it and we're going to have a look at some different ways of benefiting from, from the long term trends. So if you want to be forgiven for mistakes, trends are the way to go. If you're aggressive, self-confident, and you know your thing, you can trade the consolidations.